algae are emblematic of this Breton landscape in northwestern France. However familiar they may seem, we don't know them that well. While they do share characteristics with plants, such as photosynthesis, for example, they also display many singularities, including in terms of reproduction. These marine plants don't flower. How then do they reproduce? This is one of the many questions that the scientists of the biological station at Roscoff ask themselves. The station, which is celebrating its 150th anniversary this year, is home to around 200 scientists who study marine life, and in particular, many species of algae. Here, historical discoveries have shed new light on their life cycle. In the early 20th century here in Roscoff, a researcher named Camille Sauvaggio uncovered the life cycle of the kelp, showing that it involved a generation that was invisible to the naked eye, a microscopic generation that ensures the production of male and female gametes. Today, scientists are still studying this microscopic generation known as gametophytes. They can manipulate them, clone them, and keep them at that stage of their life cycle. This is what enables them to produce algae when they want to. This research involves the selection and control of life cycles, and of course, the conservation of all these strains. Here we have clonal cultures of male and female gametophytes which we can amplify in the lab and then keep as potential seed for this particular alga. Other scientists are on the trail of a specific red alga, Gracilaria gracilis, whose reproduction they want to further investigate. With this species, the male gametes, unlike spermatozoa, don't have a flagellum and aren't mobile as a result. How then do the male and female gametes meet in stagnant water? Here they are still in pools at low tide. There's hardly any water movement and we asked ourselves how efficient fertilization could be possible in such a system. So we tried to find out whether these little animals we saw on location associated to the algae could take part in the fertilization process. Here are the little crustaceans. They are known as Edoti. They are the same color as the Glacilaria, and their shape allows them to camouflage themselves from predators. The researchers' hypothesis is that they may play the role of pollinators by taking male gametes to female algae. For their experiment, the team must collect samples of the algae. After many years of trials, they have finally verified this theory in the lab a world first. To achieve this, the scientists formed EDOT. They placed both female and male algae in two aquariums and added EDOT in one of the tanks. After one month, they figured out the number of fertilizations obtained by counting the zygotes, or fertilized eggs, that develop at the surface of the algae. Each of these little structures represent a zygote. We will count the number of structures on the branch, the thallus of the alga. We will also measure the length of each fragment. This way, we will have a ratio. In other words, a number of fertilizations and therefore a number of zygotes per centimeter of thallus. Consequently, there are 20 times more fertilizations with Ido T than without. In parallel, the scientists are carrying out another experiment, this time using only female algae. In an aquarium, they add Ido T, previously incubated with male algae. Once again, the result is conclusive. Fertilizations occur in the aquarium containing Ido T, but not in the other. In this experiment, there are no males with the females. So the transport of male gametes can't be due to water movements. Only the role played by Idote can explain fertilization. A crucial discovery that questions the history of evolution. For algae are the ancestors of all plants on Earth. What if this animal-algae relationship existed long before the appearance of terrestrial plants? 
This antedates the emergence of relationships between animals and plants. Until now, we thought that it occurred long after plants migrated from water to land. But it may actually have existed before that. This also opens entirely new research perspectives for understanding the evolution of this interaction between plants and animals. The scientists are also working with algae producers. This collaboration allows them to exchange knowledge and feedback. In these large vats, sea lettuce is grown for animal and human consumption. The reproduction of this alga is simple. All you need to do is cut it for it to reproduce. Let's say this is my initial biomass. It will keep growing when we put it in the water. The paddle wheel will go over the algae, breaking them and so on. The plants will carry on growing. And over here, here I have three individuals. And now four, each of which will continue to grow separately. All over the world, wild algae are threatened. They're receding due to the rise in water temperature. More than ever before, it is necessary to study them and understand their functioning in an effort to save these 1.5 billion year old ancestral organisms. A population of algae that disappears means an entire ecosystem being disrupted. <laughs>